Hey guys, Trip here, and welcome to the first official episode of Welcome To, a series where I introduce you to a franchise or subgenre you may not know much about. In each episode, I'll give you a crash course on a certain franchise, usually fantasy or science fiction, discussing its atmosphere, art direction, and most importantly, the lore. These episodes are meant to be brief summaries, something to get you interested in a series that I think is worth checking out. It took me a while to decide what our first episode would be about. I went through numerous scripts, from things like Dishonored to the Conan series to Dragon Age, but instead of focusing on things you may already know about, I wanted to give you guys a real taste of what this series is all about. Some of these episodes may surprise you a bit, and I wanted to start the series with something a little... stranger. With that in mind, let's talk about Rayman. Is Acid just not doing it for you? But welcome to the Glade of Dreams. This is the wild, weird, and beautiful world of Rayman, created by French developer Michel Ancel, seen here smoking his own insanity. Rayman is a long-running franchise of 2D and 3D action platformers. Now, you may not have ever thought of Rayman as fantasy before, or maybe you didn't think this universe had any lore behind it at all. Well, that, to me, is the purpose of this series. I'm going to be doing a lot of episodes about things you either never heard of, or else never took the time to look into the lore for. Rayman's world may not be gritty or serious, but I still think it's worth examining. Each game has a very simple narrative, where Rayman, this delightful horror show of dismembered appendages, goes on an adventure to save the world with his best friend Globox. Simple, right? Well, what separates Rayman from other platformers is the world in which his adventures take place. The initial draw of Rayman's world is its art direction. Now, I'm no artist by any means, but I've never seen anything quite like this. Everything in the Glade of Dreams is colorful, lush, detailed, and full of mystery. It all feels like a children's storybook or fairy tale brought to life. I've always had a thing for French animation, especially the more modern whimsical stuff like Wok Fu. It's colorful, silly, imaginative, and always has a bit of a subtle edge to it. I mean, look into this woman's eyes. She's killed before. This is Rayman's style at its heart. On the surface, Rayman has a light-hearted tone, but it's laced with sexual humor, drug and alcohol references, and even racial stereotypes. It, it's not for everybody, but if you love cartoons with a bit of adult humor, you'll be right at home. It's right up my alley. The third game especially has a very erratic nature to it. Nobody talks right. They all ramble and mumble. Some lines probably make more sense in French than they do in English. It, it just feels a little unhinged. But it's that unhinged tone that makes the series so much fun. Some of the imagery can be a bit creepy for a kid, especially in the second game, which has a moodier, more eerie tone to it. It often feels like you're treading the line between a dream and a nightmare. Again, I love this sort of thing. The music of Rain Man has a similarly strange feel to it. It's often bouncy and upbeat, with a bit of a hip-hop or rock flair hiding in the background. It also has its fair share of moody, mysterious tracks as well. There's a lot of traditional orchestral themes mixed with some well-placed synthetics. It really adds to the offbeat, otherworldly vibe of the series. I enjoy it. Now, let's get to the lore of the world itself. I mentioned before that the world of Rayman is known as the Glade of Dreams, and that's a literal description. The entire world of Rayman is the psychedelic dream of a god called Polakis. His every dream and nightmare becomes part of reality, regardless of logic or safety. I like this, as it allows the world of Rayman to be as strange as it wants to be, while still maintaining a sense of internal consistency. Fantasy doesn't have to make conventional sense, but it has to make sense within the rules of its own world. The main power source of the Glade are looms, or lums, depending on who's talking. 
small living bodies of magical energy that power the universe and give it life. Almost every game centers around looms in some way, and there are many different types, the most important being the thousand yellow looms that power the heart of the world. The Glade of Dreams is inhabited by all sorts of weird creatures, all dreamed up by Polakis for one reason or another. As a result, the creatures in Rayman's world aren't restricted by evolution, leading to some strange and zany character designs. Of particular note are the Teensies, little wizard people who guard the world. They're all very strange, absent-minded, and eccentric, and I've always seen them as the mascots of the series. Dude, still in bed? Well, must have been a late night. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> My colleague explained everything. <laughs> well, seems like you swallowed a black lum. Major mm. bummer. <laughs> You see, black lums reproduce mm -hmm. like some kind of mm -hmm. crazy weed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're really wacky. <laughs> One thing I've always liked about the Glade of Dreams is that you're never quite sure of its scale, or even if it's a single continuous landmass. In most of Rayman's games, you go from each level by traveling through strange islands floating in space, or grinding on magic railways floating in a void of psychedelic colors, or walking through strange shortcuts that seem to defy the laws of conventional space. There is a map of the Glade itself, but given the world's mystical, mutable nature, I wouldn't be surprised if the world changes its layout in each game. That's just the sort of world in which Rayman lives. One thing I've always loved about the Glade of Dreams is the mysterious atmosphere behind it all. Rayman's world isn't always bright and upbeat. At times it can be moody, eerie, but always beautiful, with ancient ruins set against permanent moonlight, remnants of forgotten cultures lost to the sand of time. It's the sort of world that I truly want to learn more about, and the games always make sure to give you just enough information to keep you intrigued. Make no mistake though, the Glade of Dreams is a silly place. If you like your fantasy to be grim and serious all the time, you may want to look somewhere else. This is a world where spacefaring robot pirates terrorize the populace, where looms can go bad and transform into hillbilly sack monsters. This is a world where a giant blue toad man gets drunk off plum juice, floats into the sky, and hiccups bubbles for the player to use as trampolines. It's that special brand of crazy that only the French can provide. But at the same time, these games have a legitimate mythos behind them, and that's what I find so weird. In Rayman 2 especially, you gain more knowledge of the world and its history as you collect all the yellow looms. The more you find, the more you learn, up until you discover some pretty cool and creative secrets about the world. It's nothing too deep, but it gives some context and explains why the world works the way it does. So let's address the elephant in the room. Why did I decide to talk about Rayman of all things? Well, you probably think that Rayman's world is just madness, a silly little series for kids with no rhyme or reason behind it. And I couldn't really argue with you there. Rayman's world may not have the deep backstory or complex mythos of some of the other franchises we'll be talking about, but there's one thing in particular that makes it worthy of note. It's the sort of world that fosters creativity. Sure, it's weird, silly, and doesn't take itself seriously, but that's not always a bad thing. When I was a kid traveling through the Glade of Dreams, not a moment went by when I wasn't thinking, what's that? What does that do? How did it get there? Why is this the way it is? It, it feels like a world of cosmic dreams floating in space, and for some reason that intrigues me to no end. I wonder how a world like this would function, what its history would look like. I may never get the answer to those questions, but my mind fills in the gaps for me, and for a world that's built on dreams, I think that's okay. Rayman's world inspires creativity. It makes me want to write my own stories, set in my own crazy dream worlds. I think there's something to be said about any work of art that inspires you to make your own. It's something every fantasy world should strive for. So that's Rayman, a delightful little acid trip that's… sort of… for kids? If you want to give these games a try, they're available everywhere from the App Store to the Wii U to Steam. Tune in next time, when we'll talk about something a bit more normal. Slightly. Hey! 
Hey guys, Trip here. If you liked that video, why not watch some more? Hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. Hey, you see those boxes on the screen? You know, the ones with the words. Click on those if you want to follow me on Twitter, Google+, or check out my Patreon. I finally finished it, by the way, complete with rewards and other goodies. On my Patreon page, I also talk about my long-term plans for the channel, as well as a few projects I'm working on, so if nothing else, click on the link to see what I have in store for you guys. Oh, and a few people were wondering where my new logo came from. Well, one of my best friends is an artist, and he makes all sorts of weird and crazy designs, t-shirts, and animations. The weirdest part is that he does this all from his phone. Mostly because his computer sucks, but it's still pretty damn impressive. If you want him to make a logo or graphics or even just some weird artwork for you, let him know. I'll leave a link to his Twitter page in the description. Be sure to spam it as much as possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.